Hi, now we are discussing nomenclature related with stereochemistry as in the part of our lectures in Chemasis Data Online. Now, so stereochemistry is very very important topic in organic part of the CSIR and GATE examinations because uh, 70 to 80 percentage of the questions so which are given on the basis of organic part related with stereochemistry at least any one term of the given problem may related with stereochemistry that means 3d positions or 3d representations okay so that's why if one have the a strong basics on stereochemistry then he can solve the uh, problems of organic part efficiently okay right so to solve the uh, stereochemistry part one must have a 3D imagination power. That means he can view the given uh, structure and the paper is in 3D form. Okay. So then he has a more uh, chance to solve the problem with ease. That stereochemical problems. Okay. Right. So and the, uh, now so in the part of uh, basics of stereochemistry, if we observe a thick line or a thick bar or thick triangle so that means okay if we check if we observe this kind of uh, uh, representation on the structure that means so that particular group which is attached to that thick line or thick bar or thick uh, uh, triangle so that group is in uh, upward position that means from the uh, from the plane of the paper it is nearer to the observer or above the plane okay so that indicated by the thick one okay and if we observe a dotted line or dotted bar or dotted triangle that indicates away from the observer or below the plane of the molecule okay so that means if consider this is a plane of the molecule then from the this type of group that means which is connected with a dotted line so that is below the plane of this molecule okay or away from the observer okay and if we have this kind of wavy wavy representation to the particular group which is present on the given example or given organic structure so that indicates no prediction of uh, stereochemistry of that particular group that means it may be present above the plane of the symmetry or below the plane of symmetry okay so it may be either of it so that's why we are uh, this wavy indication it has uh, no stereochemical prediction okay so now the important uh, representation in uh, stereochemistry is fisher representation okay so in the fisher representation we need to project a molecule so like this uh, that means a flat projection okay a flat projection which contains one uh, vertical line with many uh, horizontal lines based on the number of groups on, on that particular given molecules okay right so now on the thick line we need to take maximum number of carbons on vertical line sorry not thick line so on vertical line so on vertical line we need to take maximum number of carbon we should uh, we should take care to have a maximum number of carbons on the vertical line okay that means maximum number of carbons containing part of the given uh, structure we need to take as uh, vertical line okay right i now uh, on horizontal line groups nearer to observer or above the plane we need to take and the another point is we, uh, the groups on the horizontal line must be uh, nearer to observer so the groups which are nearer to observer or above the plane of the uh, molecular structure we need to take those groups on horizontal lines okay and then on the vertical line so that means uh, the groups which are below to the plane of the molecule given structure we need to take on the vertical line okay and on vertical line highly oxidized carbon should be take at the top okay so after choosing the after selecting the uh, maximum number carbons and uh, uh, the below that means the 
groups which are attached below of the plane or are far away and far away from the observer are taken on the vertical line so after taking the after taking the uh, groups on vertical line we need to check highly oxidized carbon uh, and that should be a top position so that should be take a top position okay that means highly oxidized carbon means minimum hydrogens and maximum oxygens it should contain that means here this a should contain minimum number of hydrogens and maximum number of oxygens so then so that group should be taken as a top position in the vertical line okay so same this fisher projection if we check in wedge representation so the horizontal line the groups on horizontal line or above the plane or near to observer and the uh, the groups which are on the vertical line are below the observer so that is also given by the wedge okay so from the wedge we have given fisher representation which is more applicable to the um, organic molecules okay important points if we rotate 180 degrees in plane rotation we get identical okay identical uh, structures and if we rotate 90 degrees in plane rotation so we get enantiomers and if we rotate 180 degrees so out of the plane so the that uh, uh, rotation is not allowed by the fisher uh, fisher representations okay so we can check these three points in examples so consider we have a molecule and we have taken in uh, fisher projection in uh, vertical and horizontal lines so vertical lines containing a and b uh, groups and the horizontal line contains x and y groups okay right so it is in plane okay consider it is in plane right what we said a rotation in plane in plane means so the total molecule so the, the four groups a b x y so these four are in a plane okay and this plane is rotated 180 degrees that means total these four atoms when we rotate 180 degrees these four atoms can rotate because we are uh, rotating the plane in plane that means the four atoms which are present in the plane it is rotating okay so that indicates whenever 180 degrees uh, we rotate then a comes to this uh, b position and b comes to a position okay okay and uh, now and uh, x comes to y position right and y comes to x position so that is in plane rotation so that's why we get this kind of structure okay right and uh, if you rot if, uh, in that first step we have rotated from uh, this that means clockwise direction and if you rotate from anti clockwise direction so what happens in 180 degrees in plane b takes a position so like this and a takes b position like this and x uh, takes y position and y takes x position okay so we get uh, this type of uh, representation after in plane rotation that is anti clockwise rotation so this is clockwise rotation and this is anti clockwise rotation so if you check these two examples so uh, uh, two representations after 180 degrees clockwise rotation and anti clockwise rotations we have we have got same structures right please look at this two these two are same that means we get identical representations whenever we rotate 180 degrees uh, in plane rotations okay so that is what we said in the points as in the, in the as a point okay right now what we said 90 degrees so now consider in plane rotation so that is also in plane rotation and uh, we are rotating 90 degrees that means if you rotate clockwise direction a comes a comes x position so that is like this and y comes a position like this so uh, like that so all groups they uh, displaces another uh, group which is present on uh, 90 degrees to near to it okay so like that we get exam uh, we get a representation on in plane 90 degrees okay and if we consider anti clockwise 90 degrees in plane rotation we get uh, this uh, representation okay so if you check these two okay these two these two are not homomers okay they are enantiomers okay that means 
So that means whenever we rotate uh, 90 degrees in plane, we get an ensuomers. Okay. Next, and what we said, 180 degrees uh, out of the plane is not allowed by the Fisher projection. So if we take, uh, that means not through the molecule, uh, molecular plane, if we take opposite to it. Okay, if we cut the plane, so that uh, representation of Fisher is not allowed. Okay, so that's why we, not, we are not considering this one. Okay. Now, so at chiral center, if mutual exchange of any two groups on Fisher representation or Fisher projection, we get enantiomers or diastereomers. So for example, just look at this. If we X sign Y are exchanged, so we get this kind of representation. Uh, Fisher representation and if uh, A and uh, B are um, exchanged, mutual uh, exchange, then we get this kind of representation. So when you observe these two, they, uh, they are related as enantiomers. Okay, so they are not homomers, they can uh, represented as enantiomers. So if you observe what is enantiomer already, uh, we can discuss in the latter. So what is enantiomers? That means simply if uh, other than principal axis, if we have plane of symmetry, improper axis of symmetry and center of symmetry present in the given representations, so that is simply indicates enantiomers. So please uh, keep in mind that, so these are these two are not homomers, these are enantiomers. So we can discuss uh, which, uh, which we call enantiomers and diastereomers in the uh, coming lecture, okay, right. Now, if at chiral center, if three groups are mutually exchanged, so that produces simply identical. There is no change in it. Okay, so this is not to not uh, need to necessarily need to give example of for it. Okay, now 